Hey folks, welcome to another episode of ASP.NET Core from Zero to Overkill. This will be a very uh, high level episode as I'm going through an overview of wh what we'll build in the next episodes uh, as we'll do event driven integration between our services. So in this episode, we'll take a look at at what is the issue we have right now with the application as it is built at this moment, uh, some options to avoid or fix the issue, and uh, what are actually the next steps we'll take in the coming episodes. Before proceeding, the usual plugs. If the videos are being useful, please consider dropping a like, sharing, and leaving feedback. All important, but leaving feedback is probably the most important to help uh, better the videos, but like and share is also great for having greater reach of these videos. Additionally, as you might know, uh, every video comes with a, a blog post accompanying it, sorry. So you can check out the blog if you prefer to read instead of watching the video, or maybe you want to complement it. Besides that, you can reach out through Twitter if you have any questions. Uh, I also, besides these videos on YouTube, have a Twitch channel where I stream normally preparing for these videos. So if you want to take a look at behind the scenes, you can check it out there. Otherwise, I also upload the, the, the archive from the stream to YouTube. And if uh, none of these contacts is good enough, you can check out uh, my personal website or the blog where there are additional contacts. With this out of the way, let's get started. As I mentioned, uh, this will be more an overview, so there will we have some more slides this time, and not probably no code. So, as I mentioned. Uh, what is the issue with the application as it is right now? So right now what we have is something like this, where we have the auth service and the group management service, which are mostly disconnected. The only point of contact they have is when the user registers uh, or logs in, then there is a JWT token that is generated with information about the user, very little. And then the user you can use that to authenticate. So the web uh, application, the web front end, keeps the JWT and uh, passes it on to group management. So, but besides that, they are really disconnected. So what happens when uh, Stickman registers in the application is that there is the reg the account information is stored in the auth database but then when the user tries to do something in the group management api for instance just create a new group uh, what happens is we have if you miss the past episodes inside the group management api besides the group tables we have a user table to know that a user exists but because these are disconnected uh, what happens is sorry what happens is it's not in the current the local users database local users ta table in the database so the the user cannot create a group we can just take a quick look at this happening so i have here a clean database we can log in there is no user so we'll register and create new user back here so we are authenticated so no longer login and instead we have groups but if we try to create a new group uh, this group and it failed if you go here we have this invalid user to create a group because the user doesn't exist in the local group management API database. So this is the problem we have. In the past, 
as I was building all of this, I just added the user to the database manually so we could continue developing, but at some point we need to fix this issue. So we'll deal with this issue in these coming episodes and we can take a look at some options to avoid the issue altogether or actually fix it. So the first possibility is to just use the information that's part of the JWT or that we can get from the user info endpoint that's exposed from the auth service. And yeah, this will, would work. So if the user didn't exist, we could get rid of the user's table and just use that, or we could use the um, keep the keep the table and just create a new user when we detec detected that uh, there is a new one. The problem with this is uh, it would work for the creation of a new one, but what about when it changes? In the in case we only we we kept the table. So if the, there is an update to the username, which is currently what we store, better yet, a name. Currently we store the name in the. Um, if we go to the code, just let us check here real quick. If we go to the group management, and in the entities we, we have the user. And we keep a name just because to keep it fast when we ask for information about uh, groups players users and all that it all comes directly we don't have to fan out to multiple services so we can get rid of this but imagining that we don't get rid of this just using the information that comes from the from jwt or the user info end endpoint it would work for a new creation, but otherwise we would have to, in every request, check if the, the user information changed, so we would update the database. So not great. We could use it, but not great. But a problem that this doesn't solve is when we delete the user. So if the user closes the account, how do we know that we should get rid of that information in the group management service? or any other service that we'll build in the, in the future. So it depends how important we feel about this. I think it's important if the user closes its account, I just want to delete all the information that doesn't impact other users. So for me, deletion is important and this doesn't solve that issue. Another alternative is, like I mentioned, just keep the user identifier so we only need to check if the user exists. If not, create, grab the, the identifier. Or better yet, just use the identifier in all operations. So that we have. And uh, in the if we need some extra information, then the web front end will need to call the other services to get more information. So again, this would work, would simplify and avoid all this problem, except for the deleting part. Like I mentioned, if the user deleted the, uh, the account, we wouldn't know. So this would avoid the problem, not fix it, just avoid it, except for the delete part. So another option, maybe there are even more options, I highlighted three of them, is to use an event-driven approach to for communication between the services. So what we expect in this case would be Every time something changes with a user account, we create an event and the service is interested in can act accordingly. Uh, as you might expect from the title of the video, this is the approach we'll, we're going to take. Even if maybe for this specific case, it's overkill. We didn't need to go this far, particularly in terms of we could avoid it just by using the, the ID and ignoring all the rest. So we could avoid it, but we're, we can take this opportunity to, to try out these strategies, which will be useful even more for more complex stuff. So going with this approach, the idea, the final 
remembering this diagram, the final, the target situation is so again the same user registers the, the information is stored in the auth database but then when the user is registered we will use an event bus to send a message to any service that is interested in saying okay so this happened if you are interested do something if not yeah, well ignore it so in this case the group management service will be listening on these events the user registered updated deleted and can do things so in this case with the user registered when the user tries to create a new group now it will work because the group management service has this information in its database and we'll see oh this user i know stickman stickman is nice nice guy and that's it seems simple in terms of a diagram but in terms of implementation not so much so that's what we are going to do in the next episodes the reason why i want to take this approach is because it's really interesting for like i mentioned more complex scenarios so in this case only the group management is interested in this but in the future maybe we we want some more things in this case the group uh, deleted we can delete the, the user and everything that we can delete in the group management service without affecting other users so maybe anonymize this user information so that other users that share groups with uh, with them can can continue to use the features and not be terribly impacted uh, also imagine that we have a, a live matches service that uh, publish match match completed and then the the statistics service can start to work on with the information from that service and so on so we can use this approach across the whole system uh, but right now we only have a very simple scenario so it ends up being good to have a simple scenario to explain these concepts so then we can scale up on other more complex scenarios so just taking a look at what will be the next steps to implement this so this will be spread across a bunch of episodes because i'm trying to make the episodes smaller instead of one hour long episodes let's see uh, and uh, so these are the steps that i more or less know that we will need to take so We'll need to detect user count events when saving changes through EF Core because we are using ASP.NET Core identity and we'll take a look at why this is. But one of the simplest ways to do this will be to detect these changes when uh, hooking up to entity framework implementation that we are using in the auth service. Then we'll implement something that's called the outbox pattern uh, that we'll use to ensure that every time there is a, an event it is delivered at least once maybe more than once but at least once we don't want to lose these kinds of events so imagine that the user deleted the, the account and for some reason we lost the event then the 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 other services couldn't do anything about it because they simply wouldn't know so it's important to try to guarantee at least once delivery then I'll try to briefly introduce Apache Kafka, which is the what we'll use to implement the event bus. I'm not, I've never worked with Apache Kafka besides doing some quick samples, so it will be really just a brief introduction to show uh, the basics. And then after this introduction, we'll implement uh, an event publisher on top of Kafka and an event consumer on top of Kafka. So the event publisher will be used in the auth service to publish when things happen and the event consumer will be used on the um, group management service to be listening to every time something happens. And then one final topic we'll address is ensuring an impotency, which is a fancy word to say ensuring that uh, the event is only processed once. So if the user is updated we don't want to update it more than once and don't want to create it more than once 
even if we probably couldn't because it would the the primary key would fail but you get the point uh, in this case it's simple maybe not that is important but in other cases it's really important to not process the same event multiple times and create wrong and have end up uh, corrupting the data because we didn't handle that correctly and that's it this is the overview for what we are going to do so we'll implement all of this as usual in sp.net core stuff uh, and we'll introduce kafa which is an interesting technology we could use other kinds of uh, message brokers like rabbitmq but i've used rabbitmq and i wanted to try something different so we're going with uh, kafka and eventually because kafka is a bit different and can be used for string processing and stuff like that. Maybe in the future we'll hook up into that. Right now we'll just use it simply as an event buzz to to fan out events between the services. And that's it. Hope you find this interesting and will join me for the next episodes around the topic. Maybe sometimes I will go into over engineering because it's the usual in this series, unfortunately, or fortunately, because I, I have fun doing that. Hope you also find it fun and of course dial th that a bit when using these concepts at work try to scale down on the over engineering because over engineering on a side project is nice on the actual project it depends so i'll try to not over engineer that much but i'll probably over engineer a, a bit because we are taking a simple scenario and extrapolate how we would handle more complex ones. So let's see. But like I said, hope you find this interesting and join me in the next ones. Uh, right now, thanks for stopping by. See you.